Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest introduced the world to a cast of colorful mental patients, as well as Nurse Ratched, the cruel administrator who kept them in line. It also inspired an Oscar-winning movie. From the stars to the side characters, here's what happened to the cast of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Louise Fletcher won an Oscar for her portrayal of the villainous Nurse Ratched, and her performance is so iconic that the character's been synonymous with sadistic authority figures ever since. However, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was actually what kickstarted Louise Fletcher's return to acting. She had already found some success on TV in classics like Maverick, The Untouchables, and the original Perry Mason. However, as she explained to the New York Times, the imposed height that made her so powerful as Ratched actually held her back in those years, she explained. No television producer thought a tall woman could be sexually attractive to anybody. I was able to get jobs on westerns because the actors were even taller than I was. In 1964, she took a decade off from acting to focus on raising her kids. When she returned in Thieves Like Us, that movie teamed her up with one of the era's great directors, Robert Altman, and some of its biggest stars, like Shelley Duvall. And then, of course, she made One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest the following year, which became her landmark movie. Some of her other roles include Mrs. McKelch in the sci-fi chiller Invaders from Mars and the grandmother in the 1987 adaptation of trash classic Flowers in the Attic. More recently, she's appeared as Rosie in Netflix's Girl Boss. The streaming giant is also home to the series Ratched, an original story for the character Fletcher made famous, and a prequel of sorts to Cuckoo's Nest starring Sarah Paulson. His role as anti-hero R.P. McMurphy won Jack Nicholson his first of three Oscars, but had already been toiling in Hollywood for years by that point. After turning down an animation job for Scooby-Doo studio Hanna-Barbera, young Jack Nicholson went to work for Roger Corman, the year's king of low-budget filmmaking. In between acting jobs, he wrote The Trip for actors Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper, who'd score Nicholson his first big role in Easy Rider. Soon, Nicholson became the face of a new generation of filmmakers and stars, with roles in classics like Five Easy Pieces, Chinatown, and of course, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Nicholson got his most iconic role six years later in The Shining as Jack Torrance, an alcoholic driven to kill his family by the evil influence of the Overlook Hotel. Some of his other films include A Few Good Men, The Departed, and Batman. He's racked up a record 12 Oscar nominations, more than any other actor in history. He continued acting until 2010's How Do You Know, which reunited him with James L. Brooks, the director who'd led him to Oscars with Terms of Endearment and As Good As It Gets. Since then, Nicholson has been retired, but he's left fans with no shortage of films to catch up on. Ken Kesey's original novel was narrated not by McMurphy, but by another patient, The Silent Chief. While the Native American inmates didn't have quite as big a role in the movie, Will Sampson's performance still made his character memorable. Sampson came to film from a career in rodeo that lasted 20 years. When One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest producers saw him perform, they realized the six-foot-seven cowboy was perfect to play the monumental chief. Sampson continued acting for most of his life. Some of his biggest roles include a medicine man in Poltergeist 2, acting opposite Clint Eastwood in the outlaw Josie Wales, a regular TV gig in the detective show Vegas, and a starring role in the Canadian drama Fishhawk. But Hollywood has never been kind to Native Americans, but Samson at least has done his part to change that. In 1979, he helped found the American Indian Registry for the Performing Arts, an organization that continues to help actors and other artists to this day. But his first love was always painting, a career he continued until his death in 1987. Billy Bibbit is a shy young man who survived multiple suicide attempts, but is tragically undone by ratchet psychological warfare. Cuckoo's Nest director Milos Forman got actor Brad Dourif the role after spotting him on stage in Woodstock, New York. This was the beginning of Dourif's film career, and he went on to play the lead in John Huston's adaptation of Flannery O'Connor's Wise Blood. He appeared in June, where he met David Lynch, who would later cast him in Blue Velvet. But his most iconic role was about as far from poor, innocent Billy as you could get. In Child's Play, he appeared as serial killer Charles Lee Ray, who transferred his soul into a doll to become Chucky. Dareff would continue to play Chucky in six more films over the next 30 years, and he's on track to return to the role in a TV series in 2021. He even got to call back to his earlier role as Billy in Cult of Chucky, which saw him terrorize a mental hospital he describes as a cuckoo's nest. While Chucky was a voice role that mostly kept Dareff's face out of sight, viewers will still recognize him from his role as Sauron's slimy toady Grima Wormtongue in the Lord of the Rings series. 
Despite his nebbish appearance, Sidney Lassick has a rugged history, serving in the US Navy during World War II. When he returned to civilian life, he began acting, appearing in various minor roles in minor movies before his breakthrough as Charlie Cheswick in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. After that, he was able to score bigger projects, most famously as a high school teacher in Brian De Palma's classic adaptation of Stephen King's horror novel Carrie. The horror genre was good to him elsewhere in his career, as he'd score major roles in chillers like The Unseen and Alligator. He also appeared on some TV classics, including Amazing Stories, Hawaii Five-O, Night Court, and The X-Files. Later, he'd re-team with Cuckoo's Nest director Milos Forman for a cameo in Man on the Moon. Lassik was also one half of the old couple who rapper Vanilla Ice stayed with in his legendary embarrassing star vehicle called as Ice. But we have to imagine Lassik would prefer we don't say too much about that. Playing Max, one of the least compliant patients, was a breakout role for a young Christopher Lloyd. Though it had a fairly successful stage career before one flew over the cuckoo's nest, this was his first film role, and it launched him into a screen career that continues to this day. While he hasn't been as prolific as co-stars like Jack Nicholson, he's shown a key eye for iconic roles and nostalgic classics that have been seared into the brains of generations of kids, from the 80s on up. The most notable of these roles, of course, was the eccentric inventor Doc Brown in the Back to the Future series, a part he owns so completely that it's hard to watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest without expecting him to bust out his catchphrase. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have range. At least as many viewers will recognize him as a far less lovable character, the terrifying Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Some of his other classic parts include Uncle Fester in the Addams Family movies, a Klingon commander in Star Trek III The Search for Spock, an even stranger alien in the cult classic The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai Across the Eighth Dimension, and the zombified Rasputin in Anastasia. But his longest running role was Jim on Taxi, playing the self-proclaimed living embodiment of the 60s for half a decade and winning an Emmy in the process. Looking incredibly young, Danny DeVito plays Martini, a relatively minor role by someone who'd prove himself to be a major talent in the following decades. He reteamed with Jack Nicholson for Terms of Endearment, and followed up Nicholson's Batman role as the Joker by playing the Penguin in Batman Returns. This began a long collaboration with Batman director Tim Burton that includes films like Mars Attacks, Big Fish, and Dumbo, and which always seems to end up with DeVito back in the Penguin's trademark top hat. Some of his other recognizable roles include his sleazy supporting turns in crime dramas like Heist and L.A. Confidential, and the adventure duology Romancing the Stone and Jewel of the Nile. He's also had a successful voice acting career, playing iconic animated characters like the villain of Space Jam, a title role in The Lorax, and Phil the Trainer in Disney's Hercules. More recently, he's played Spencer's grandpa in Jumanji The Next Level. DeVito's also found success behind the camera. He's directed seven films, including Death to Smoochie, The War of the Roses, and the family classic Matilda. But DeVito found perhaps his most iconic role on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. After a guest appearance in 2006 as Frank Reynolds, self-proclaimed trash man and the stepdad of main characters Dennis and Dee, he joined the gang of regulars, where he stayed the past 14 years. I mean, there's gonna be some changes around here, you understand? <laughs> One of Chief and McMurphy's most prominent ward maids is Dale, a middle-aged man who does what little he can to maintain some kind of order when Ratchet isn't around. He's played by William Redfield, a veteran stage actor who'd been acting since he was nine years old. Entertainment was a family business for him. His father was a conductor, and his mother was a chorus girl whose resume included Broadway's legendary Zigfield Follies. Redfield had a successful stage career in his own right, acting in plays by everyone from Shakespeare to Cole Porter. He even originated the role of Cy Crowell Thornton Wilder's classic Our Town. He also appeared in a number of beloved movies, including The Fist of Charles Bronson's Crook Killing Sprees in Death Wish and the sci-fi classic Fantastic Voyage. His role in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest could have catapulted him to even greater heights, but tragically, it didn't work out that way. Redfield was diagnosed with leukemia during filming, and he passed away two years later. In one memorable scene, McMurphy bribes an orderly to let him throw a Christmas party. Horror fans will immediately recognize the orderly as Scatman Cruthers, who had a much less amicable relationship with Jack Nicholson in The Shining, where Cruthers played Dick, the head chef at the Overlook Hotel. But Cruthers had a career that went far beyond either of these roles. Before he took up acting, he spent 20 years as a multi-instrumentalist and vocalist touring the jazz circuit. He told the New York Times that he took his stage name when a radio director in Dayton, Ohio, said that he needed something snappier than Benjamin Sherman Cruthers. So Cruthers told the director to call him Scatman, because he did a lot of scat singing at the time. He made his screen debut in 1948 on LATV's Dixie Showboat, as the first black performer broadcast in the city. Many years later, he had a recurring role on the classic sitcom Sanford and Son, 
and he was a regular on Chico and the Man. But you won't recognize his face in some of his most recognizable roles. He starred as a kung fu fighting canine in the classic cartoon Hong Kong Fui, and he played supporting parts in Transformers as Jazz and in Disney's The Aristocats, where he returned to his jazz roots to lead the musical set piece Everybody Wants to Be a Cat. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.